Hello, welcome everyone. This is Meredith. I am here with our daily reading for Thursday, August 2nd, 2018. I am using the Gilded Tarot today. I just got this deck last week. I love it. It shuffles like a dream. Any of you out there who do cards know some of them are just difficult. These slide like silk in your hands. Love that. And uh, they're great jumpers. <laughs> Meaning... I, I really do choose cards by how they fall out of the deck. And this deck, it's just so quick and easy to get your reading because they shuffle so nice and they jump freely right out of the deck. So that's how this was chosen. Well, that's how they're all chosen, really. But this one just happened so fast, it was fun. So anyway, uh, Thursday, energy atmosphere of the day. And again, I'm doing a bit of a shorter reading right now um, just because of demands on the schedule and readings at this time. So, let's get started. Our bottom of the deck card. Ten of Pentacles. Ooh, we had this yesterday. Mm-hmm. Good fortune for us. Good fortune for us. I love seeing that card. Tens are about completion, the completion of a cycle, fulfillment. Um, so this is Earth Energy. It's Mercury and Virgo. This is the Legacy card, the Inheritance card. So we may still be in a bit of that process from yesterday. This is the theme running through through the reading. So uh, it wasn't our bottom of the deck card yesterday. It was in the body of the reading. But it just means that it's still with us. So we're still in a process of bringing something to fulfillment and completion. And that is um, that could be around our happiness, emotions, our stable emotions, our finances, um, for some people, this is about buying a home or moving home, moving house. Could be inheriting property. Um, it's committing deeper to um, our beloveds. It's committing deeper to our our beloved friendships. Um, there's a cycle of life on this card, so there's some sort of cycle that's coming into fulfillment right now. Let's see what our first card is. The Knight of Swords. Hmm. He's a bloody bugger, that one. Um, he's fire and air. That's Taurus and Gemini energy there. There's a bit of stress on the Knight of Swords. Uh, there's a uh, tempestuous and unpredictable energy about him. He's a roller coaster ride kind of dude. There are highs and lows with him. Um, there can be tension. And there can be a lot of reaction rather than response around this this night. There's determination and drive. It's about having a strong sense of self. <laughs> One of the up notes on this night is that he's got a quirky and offbeat sense of humor. But he's forthright, intelligent, and he's prepared to fight for his beliefs. And he's also an expect the unexpected. So there's an unexpected energy to the day. We may find ourselves triggered and or engaged over certain things by other people. We may find that we tend toward reacting rather than responding. Responding is intuitive. Reacting is dramatic. So just keep it in mind. Let's see what goes with it. I want to see what's getting stimulated. Oh, the tower. Mm. I'm going to do a little shout out here to my friend Julie. I know she loves this card. <laughs> not <laughs> uh okay anyway tower fire mars this is destruction it's also enlightenment it's getting down to earth and back to basics this is engaging new concepts too and this is also about universal energies overriding our will not that anyone is, you know, stepping in and taking away our free will. It just means that there are circumstances that uh, will challenge our will for sure. There are a couple of uh, positive notes on the tower. One of them being, it's, you know, a new way to relate and adapt to spiritual awakening. And it's also a surrender or a yield to divine love of self and divine love within our beloved relationships. So that's really positive. The fact, though, that we're seeing this bloody bugger this night 
right next to the tower speaks to me of an event that's somewhat shocking or strong or deeply expansive and surprising. It's unexpected and surprising. And our response to that may in fact be a reaction, which is a little bit dramatic, which is an old way of being. And we're going to need to do the work, the inner self work, to not be a reactor. Instead, be a responder with our calm, peaceful, divine, compassionate, loving selves. So, this should be interesting. Comments, people. Please leave comments on the, on the reading. Let me know what happened. Uh, let's see our next card. Ooh, the Knight of Cups. Well, we got two knights here. They are facing opposite directions, if you'll notice. This guy is looking that way. This one's over here. Um, so we may feel pulled in two different directions, head over heart. Because the Knight of Cups, he's a lover. He's fire and water energy. This is Aquarius and Pisces energy as well. All knights bring, you know, news, proposals, communication. Um, the Knight of Cups encourages us to follow our, our feelings, our passion, our faith. There's sensitivity here mixed deeply with courage. Uh, which is a beautiful combo. There's new energy here. This is, he's connected to our new relationships. And his message is be open to real love. So, you know, intuitively speaking, it looks like real love came riding in on a horse <laughs> and shocked the heck out of us, knocked us out of our tower, knocked down the tower altogether. Maybe we were drowning in some kind of personal sorrow. You know, all of July, end of, end of June, all of July, we got repeating love messages. I'm not going to hammer on that because you've heard me say it so much. And if you've been watching the dailies, you know it. So I don't need to repeat it. But a lot of us are in new places with new people, which is very exciting and adventurous and joyful. And anything good you can think of, it's there. And we've talked so much about how the frequency of the relationships we're experiencing now um, is unlike any we've experienced before, which, you know, makes it even more heady. Wonderful. It's still going to trigger and engage our BS that we need to love, heal, release, let go of. And yesterday's message was a lot about assessing our options and letting go of what doesn't serve us and behaving in old ways. There's no place for that in these new relationships. Um, so this is, this is the tower. This is the knight of swords riding in and saying, enough, enough, I'm cutting through that BS. And you're done with it because you're going to live real. You're going to live passionate. You're going to live authentic. And then we have this other knight of cups. And he's all about follow your heart. Follow your heart. Surrender to love. Real love. The love you've dreamt of, prayed for, and is finally here. Ooh, I have a chill in my spine over that. I love that. <laughs> oh, jeez. Come on. Ten of wands. Fire. That's Saturn in Sagittarius. Um, this is responsibilities and burden. Carrying too much on our shoulders. You know, there's a few tarot decks where um, these wands are on fire and the person's on the ground under them. I don't know why I laugh when I say stuff like that, but I just, it shocks me. So I think, how bad does it have to get that you are underneath your own pile of burning wands and that you set fire to it? <laughs> Like, that's a dramatic response, right? So we have a 10 here, we have a 10 here. 10s are about completion, the end of a cycle. And I love that it's under the tower because it's like we said, okay, I'm lighting this on fire, I'm done with it. I'm blowing up this, this joint because <laughs> I'm not living here anymore. And we're not, we're moving on. This eclipse energy has been intense. This, these retrograde planets, intense. We're doing things different. But this Ten of Wands specifically is about deciding to um, delegate, 
not do things in an old way. There are those of us who work way too hard and way too much and way too long, and it comes at the expense of our beloved relationships. Sorry for the background noise. Of course, landscaper dude shows up right now. Um, anyway, when I see the Ten of Wands, I feel that it's a beautiful reminder to have a much more intentional schedule, especially if you're an entrepreneur, self-employed, work from home, whatever it is, um, a more intentional schedule. And if you work outside of your home in an office and you're just taking on overtime, take a break because there's so much to appreciate and enjoy in our personal lives. And if we're busy with our nose against the grindstone, we're missing it. Some of us are missing our kids. Some of us are missing them, you know, those beautiful, precious moments that you don't ever get back. So reconsider your schedule and be more intentional about it. Um, you know, it's so easy to put a doctor's appointment on the schedule. It's so easy to say, well, I'll run this errand this day and I'll do this that day. Have you considered actually scheduling downtime? Writing in six hours of vacation inside your Monday or Tuesday or whatever day? Consider doing it because uh, there's so much to appreciate, like I said. You all know it. You all want it. Um, it just sounded so authoritative there. Um, for some people, this is an opportunity to consider less demanding work, too. Maybe you want to get out of the career you're in to do something else. This could be a good time for that to happen. And also, this card invites us to consider our responsibility to the circumstances we find ourselves in. And if you listen to how people speak, if you listen even to how you speak... You'll hear yourself say from time to time, this makes me feel, that person made me feel. No, you chose to feel this way. Take responsibility for that. So that's what the Ten of Wands reminds you of, um, how to get authentic with yourself. Also be mindful of draining people. In the consideration of your responsibility to your current circumstances, the question is, how can I do it differently? How can I change my inner dialogue? I'm not going to blame and shame myself or anyone else. I'm going to own what's mine. I'm going to look at it authentically, take responsibility for it. But taking responsibility for it doesn't mean that you sit there and stew over it either. You say, all right, well, I recognize I've done this to myself. I'm responsible for that. I'm going to do it different now. I'm going to let it go. Because doing it different is the gift. Yeah, make sure your relationships are not neglected from overwork, overburden. And this can also mean that you've reached a point of overwhelm and can't take in new information on a personal level. So, intentional schedule. Make sure you've got time in your day for the things that you have appreciation for. The things that you are loving into existence through your manifestation. If you're missing something in your life, whether it's time with your kids, time with your parents, time with a friend, time with your beloved, there is no such thing as time, but there is space to be made for all of that stuff. So stop watching the clock. Be intentional and deliberate about your desires for your days. Build it into your day. Build it into your personal space and have at it. Okay, feel guided to do a clarifier on the tower. So sorry for the mower, folks. Um, we most need to know. I'm using the Chuck Spezzano love cards. We most need to know about the tower. What more can we know about the tower? Ooh, jumpers. First card, neediness. Yeah, neediness because we're feeling a sense of personal overwhelm and we need a break. You know, this looks like a clingy person, um, you know, hanging on to something that isn't working, that isn't quite right for them. But in this respect and in the spirit of what I've read here so far, this neediness could be our own attention to self. Like we've given too much or have been giving too much of ourselves to something outside of ourselves. So we need to, to bring it back in. Next card that comes with this is expectations. Yeah, this goes to my, you know, suggestion of a more intentional and deliberate schedule. 
you know, we have these expectations that um, things are going to be a certain way. And look, this this expectation's way up here, and these people are way down here. So we could be feeling like we're not meeting it, and that could be because we don't have enough space and deliberate intent for the appreciation we know we want to bask in. Wow, there's a lot of background noise today. <laughs> Maybe none of you are noticing it. Okay, last card on the tower, Grace. You know, some say the tower is the fall from Grace card, but I feel like we're falling into Grace. Sure, some things fell down. So we blew some things up. We lit them on fire. <laughs> we had to eradicate them to get to Grace. It seems worthwhile, though. All right, I feel complete with that. I'm going to move on to our Doreen Virtue Angel Answer Cards. This is your opportunity to ask a question about what's here or something completely different. And now for something completely different. Um, ooh, I love that. Get more information. Okay. That's simple. Go within, be intuitive, figure out how to be more deliberate with your time space. Huh. Here's for the Ten of Wands. Ask for help from others. There's the delegation card. Delegate, delegate. You don't have to do it all, babies. And then, no. Perfect. An emphatic no. Some of you asked yes, no. You get emphatic no. But look at this. Ten of Wands is the epitome of, let me learn how to say no. <laughs> okay. Last card. What is the highest and greatest affirmation for our day? I'm using the universe has your back. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, here we go. Thank you, universe, for helping me see beyond the limits of fear. Thank you for expanding my perceptions so that I can see what is of the highest good. Yeah, could anybody say, let me be intentional and deliberate about the quality of my life and how I choose to live it? There it is. That's the affirmation. Ooh, I'm passionate about it, everyone. Um, thank you so much for watching, tolerating all my background noises here. And... Please give the video a thumbs up and a share. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That does help me out a lot. Um, I am getting to the private readings. It's all happening. The August readings are uploading now to YouTube, so be on the lookout for them. Don't forget to watch your sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs for August. It'll give you a great snapshot of the month. Highly encourage you to uh, find an astrologer on YouTube that you like and follow them so you can stay abreast of what's going on in the cosmos and why you might be freaking out or why you're super zen right now. Um, whatever it is, it's really good to check out the astrology, most especially when you tune into a card reading. It's helpful. Uh, I will be back with Friday's message. I hope you have a beautiful Thursday. Thank you again for watching. Peace. Bye for now.